a big big spot in my heart. But um, yeah, Declan, Declan and Iris work very well together. And the first book, The Fine Print, the dynamic between the characters was Grumpy Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Quirky and not grump. Like he wasn't a horrible grump. Declan? Declan is a grump through and through. And how was that? Like, how is that dynamic for you? Um, Iris <laughs> Iris isn't sunshiny, but she is yeah. she is positive, but she's confident, not in a way um like other characters in your books tend to be, where it's like very positive, and that's fine. But I loved Iris's character because I relate the most to her in terms of attitude. But what is how was that writing in terms of that dynamic? And um, just those two characters interacting, how is that experience for you? I would say Iris is a character I really connect with too, because I can be positive, but there's also a line, right? When you go through hard things, it's hard to be positive about everything. It's hard to trust others. You know, there's, there's a lot of weight to her that makes her who she is and the decisions she makes and, and how she acts and interacts. So when I went into writing her, I kind of just, you know, the characters really form in my mind as I write each chapter. And with her, I felt like she was really easy to write. Like her chapters, it took me, it it wasn't difficult and I was able to live in her head and also understand her experiences to a certain extent um, and how she would interact with Declan. Now, Declan, it's hard. It's hard to write about grumpy, mean men (laughs) because I'm not I wouldn't consider myself a mean person so kind of getting in the headspace of someone who is extremely sarcastic will cut down other people and really not take any type of like slack from anyone it's fun to go there in my head but I almost have to like disconnect and become him write the chapter and then you know remember okay like that's it. Like now I have to go on to Iris and become her and then write her chapter. So I'm glad you say he's the grumpiest because I really tried. And I think it'll be interesting to see what people think if Rowan's grumpy or Declan. And I agree that Iris to me isn't sunshiny. She's positive, but I would say she's just kind of, I think someone literally told me that she's just, you know, a boss, a lady boss. And mm-hmm. that's her trope. Um, I noticed that on on a lot of like the websites it seems to be book one and book two is there a book three yes i have to add the goodreads there's going to be a book three i have a deal for book three with um the with little brown so they'll be doing the uk and and british commonwealth with that so there is a book three coming and that will be the next book i write i just have not begun it but i do have a rough outline of what the story will be which is exciting uh Gosh, I, I I loved it. Um, I think I also really liked um Cal and Iris's dynamic. I loved that friendship. There was a point where I did kind of feel sad for her because he was her, her only friend, and her only mm-hmm. friend happens to be her boss's brother. And he she does poke fun at that, but I think it's super hilarious that um the way that the characters are established in your books, it just, it's very natural and cohesive. Like Cal already seems like a character that we knew. And same with Declan, even though it's like, um, uh, they kind of show up in different moments, obviously when it's not their book, but going back to the grumpy part, that was really highlighted in the way that he interacted with his father. Gosh, that man wow like you really wrote a villain i i'm so used to characters eventually redeeming themselves but his father does not not (laughs) not in this book and there were moments where i'm like gosh i i hate you a lot Mm -hmm. like i hope that i don't know i mean this is up to you as an author but like i hope at one point something is explained because it's just no one can be that evil you know I mean, I don't know. You tell me. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know many billionaires, I would ask. (laughs) I think Seth is a complicated person. And I think with each of his sons, he has a different dynamic. And for him in particular with Declan, I think he's the most atrocious because he sees him as this direct competition. And when you had 
how I see Seth is he's someone who loved his wife dearly, but he never loved his children as much as he loved his wife. And then losing his wife kind of pushed him into this really negative cycle where he then basically lost his children. He really lost himself. And all he has left is this position, this CEO, his job, his image, how he looks to everyone else. That's what he's clinging on to. And if you take that away, who is he? He has to live with his demons. He has to live with all the decisions he's made, the horrible person he's become. And someone that his wife, frankly, probably wouldn't want to even look at someone like him. So I think facing who he is, is a, is a big problem. And I can't say I've met someone as atrocious as him, but I can see why he's made the decisions he has. And it's also like, interesting to me that in many ways, Declan and Seth have a lot in common. Uh, very competitive, very protective, very extremely loyal to not only themselves, but to their jobs. Um, and this is highlighted in, I don't want to give it away, of course, I won't, but <laughs> in the big fight, which is inevitable. Um, and he says some very mean things, hurtful things. And I kept thinking to myself, okay, just like snap out of it, snap out of it. But then he doesn't. He just goes on this sort of rampage of being awful to Iris. And it, it couldn't, I just I couldn't stop thinking about this is very similar to other conversations he's had with his father. But, you know, good on you for writing that that part because it was hard. He was mean. He was mean, mean, mean. And you can tell that this was not his moment for redemption. This is not it. Like he's going to grovel. And thank you for, by the way, for writing that. I love it when, <laughs> you know, characters grovel. So keep doing that. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was hard to read because I was, I had just fallen in love with the characters, absolutely blindly loyal to them. And then this happened. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. A lot of I emotions. Know. It's really hard to write, to be honest. It's, I dread absolutely dread getting to those scenes it's where I will stop and then start questioning is everything good enough up to this point is it not oh okay I'll just go rework that because I really don't want to do this part so I will say it's equally hard to write it and up until that point I think it's you know interesting within the book you hear especially in the fine print like Declan is this not great person right he's mean he can he's he's been mean to his own brother you know in the fine print he basically was telling Rowan he couldn't do what he needed to do. And he, you know, he couldn't like go and fall in love. He needed to move back and all of, you know, he said harsh things. And I think in terms and conditions, you just because he is good with Iris doesn't mean that's changed for him across other people and how he interacts. He's a very feared CFO, especially that he's the one that makes a lot of the financial decisions that cuts out wages and, um, all of the benefits, you know, he's kind of a not great mastermind. So as much as it hurts, it's consistent with who he is and yes. his past. Yeah. And I think it's that's what needed to happen for him to realize that like something's got to give. Like he can't be treating people like this and expect, you know, all his brothers to like him and, you know, his wife slash secretary, you know, executive assistant, whatever you want to, you know, call her position. Um, mm -hmm. To be loyal to you, like something's got to break, something's got to give for people to be loyal to you in a different way. However, asterisk, um, he is, I wouldn't say he's a teddy bear inside because he is kind of a prick sometimes, but there is a moment and I'm just going to read it out to you. <laughs> and it's, um, it, okay. And it starts off with fucked. You're absolutely fucked. And I thought that was hilarious. The comment I left is, ha, 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 yes, you are. <laughs> because I, I, rem I can just <laughs> see his face kind of go, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, he thought he had everything under control. And mm -hmm. Iris was like, no, no. And then I'm just going to gush on. Give me one second. Um, the, can I talk about the blinking? Can, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah like so for those who haven't read it, there is a teeny tiny cute motif, the blinking motif. And 
When Declan blinks twice, it's like his facade is cracking and he only usually only blinks more than once in front of Iris. And that's how you kind of know that something is shifting inside, like he's changing as a person. And so I thought I always thought that was so cute when, you know, Iris would say, oh, my God, I've never seen Declan blink twice. And I'm like, okay, shit, this is important. I have to highlight this part because this is when his character is changing. It's shifting. And so I just, that was super cute. I really, I really enjoyed that part. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you highlighted that. I, you know, because I think he's very, he has this like mask on all the time. And there's certain parts that he blinks twice. And I know which one you're referencing there. And it's like, what is happening? <laughs> what is, you know, his brain can't compute that he's not in control of what's going on. And Iris is like this mastermind. And there, I think I love like their mm -hmm. battle for control. That's one of the fun things that I had writing was him trying to like establish that and her being like, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm leading you around by like the tie and you're just following me. There's also, um, I can't, this is just one of my favorite lines I have ever read. Uh, it's Iris, and she says, eh, I've swallowed worse. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I, know. I thought, I was like, oh, my God, Lauren. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> it was hilarious. And, again, I can see Iris saying that with ease. And, I mean, Declan, whatever you want to say about him, I mean, he's a man. He's, yeah, he's going to fall for any type of bait anything like that and I just oh gosh it's like yeah. this whole book is just littered with me like oh my god like what I don't want to give it away <laughs> but <laughs> I mean that one so there's always lines I write like in each book that I'm like oh my god if my mother ever read this <laughs> right right and there's always some of those and that one is one that I'm like no matter what draft I'm on this has to stay I will make it stay and it made it it made it I also really love the language motif. Um, there are several times during the book where he uses a variety of terminologies from different languages to kind of express himself. And the backstory behind that is so cute. Like, like that humanizes him in a way where you're like, oh, like, I, I, again, I won't say what, what the backstory is, but I think mm -hmm. it's just so incredibly sweet and so lovely that... Um, he held on to something like that. Um, there's a variety of languages. There is, um, there's also Arabic. I remember reading that. That was, that was the part that I read the, like I highlighted yes. the entire page. <laughs> I love um, that part. Yeah. I'm so, it's so beautiful. That's all I'll say. But there's like, there's like different expressions. Um, I think there's a moment where he's like, um, there's a German expression for the need to want to punch someone in the face. And then there's another <laughs> time where it's like, um, I can't, I, I, I can't remember any of them now, but like, I just remember that that was so cute. It became their secret language. And every time she used a word, cause she started to pick up that, you know, behavior from him and he would kind of have a word back for her. Um, and mm -hmm. until, until the very end, like they were communicating in almost this code um, which I think is so sweet and it was so lovely and I am a sucker for like I am grumpy to everyone but I love and adore and wor worship you like that I love that so I think that's pretty much Declan and Iris like he's grumpy to everyone but with Iris a big fat line where he's just like they have inside jokes and they have a secret language and yeah it was just so stinking cute gosh <laughs> Yes, I will say that part I wrote in my acknowledgments for the language. It was mm -hmm. inspired. Okay, so I told you I listened to Taylor Swift while writing. And I it was the song Illicit Affairs. And I, I don't even know if I can say that. Like I can say the direct quote, but I probably won't remember exactly. But it's like, you taught me a secret language that I can't speak with anyone else. And it was those two lines of a song that really... I sat and I thought about like, why are those my favorite like lyrics of that song? And I thought it was so beautiful, even though like she's referencing, you know, their love. I was like, what if two people have a secret language? Like, what does that look like? And then it kind of, I found like this, you know, foreign word that described a particular situation. And it just really stemmed from that. And it kind of spiraled into this whole 
I guess like the whole second act and the third act that they have Mm -hmm. this language together. Yeah, I thought it was so cute. It was so cute. Thank you.